Sorry guys, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back. Having some technical difficulties, but I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Just had a couple technical difficulties. I'm sorry guys, I'm back. We're back, we're back, we're back. Um, Mr. Hero, she's gonna be pulling up um, at her place and joining us in a hot second. So that's what it was. I was just trying to see what was going on, making sure she was good. Hello, 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 everybody. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. But I'm back. Um, but anywho, so yeah, we're just going to wait. She's pulling up to um, her salon. And then she's going to uh, she's gonna check in in a second. So I'm just waiting on her to let me know when she's ready. Hey. Hey, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. So we're just waiting on her to pull up. Um, I hope everybody's got their cocktail. I told you this is mine. It's beautiful. Uh, make sure you guys are following uh, Sips of Passion because she will have a cocktail for me every week. And um, we do um, post a recipe on the website. So if you don't have the cocktail tonight, then at least you will have the uh, recipe so that you guys can make it on your own. Okay, so I'm just waiting. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Um... Oh, thank you. Where did I get this chain from? I got this chain from um, Forever 21. Okay. Forever 21. Okay, hold on. Hold on. She's coming. She's coming, guys. She's coming. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Can you guys yes, hear me now? Yes, okay. ma'am. <laughs> First of all, how are you doing? I'm good, girl. I made it, okay? <laughs> I told them, if you know anything about Atlanta traffic, then you already know that something's going to happen. So I'm not even tripping. I'm grateful that you even took the time to uh, jump on here with me. 
Oh no, you're fine. I'm, I'm like, girl, I ain't got no makeup on. No That's okay, girl. I'm like, I'm here. You here? <laughs> so, um, first of all, I just want to tell you guys that I did an interview with Mr. Hira uh, a few months ago. And just having a conversation with her, first of all, like everybody else, I've been following you for a while um, because, you know, you are a short hair girl. And so it's always inspiring to see other women who are rocking short hair because we know that there's a stigma that you shouldn't wear short hair or this type of hairstyle can be kind of manly. So that's really how I kind of started following you. I was like, oh, this girl, she fly and her <laughs> hair look good. And then um, I was at Rick Ross' birthday party. I think I was telling you this. And uh -huh. I walked there. I'm like, that's the girl that I saw that I be seeing online. Okay, okay. So <laughs> that's a little bit about me and Miss Tahira. But I want you to introduce yourself and just let everybody know who you are and what you what you got going on. And we'll just go from there. Well, my name is Tahira, and as you can see, I am inside of my beautiful salon that I just opened up uh, December the 15th. It was my grand opening. Congratulations! I'm so proud. Of so much. Um, I am a master cosmetologist, hair stylist. Recently added celebrity stylist to my roster and um, salon owner, uh, businesswoman, entrepreneur here in Atlanta. I have several brands, you know, the Faded Beauty, Wife Mother Hustler, uh, my twins, <laughs> the Rainbow Twins. Yeah. And so I'm just girl <laughs> you just you just you just doing it doing it girl and i'm like i don't even know how um look i still have the fuel to sit here you know and do right this. right <laughs> so let me ask you this because the topic is reinventing yourself through motherhood right and so um one of the things that a lot of mothers do even i did it to myself in the beginning was okay after i had this my baby i gotta get back to my old self right and then I started thinking about, well, well, damn, I'm never going to be that same woman that I was before getting pregnant because now I have a whole new title. I'm a mother. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm never going to be that Chanel. I'm a whole new Chanel now. So I know that you were already a mother before you had those amazing twins, but, you know, just kind of watching you through social media, I see you reinventing yourself every day. So how <laughs> has that journey been with the, with, like, with the twins? How has that been? Um, it's, it's been a journey. Um, but the people, people don't understand is like having kids, it, depending on who you are, it gives you a little bit more motivation. It gives you a little yeah. bit more push yeah. to want to just go harder. I don't know what it was about me. Hold on, dear. I'm about to just of confidence um, and I can't speak for everyone because unfortunately for some um, it, it's the opposite you know and um, but, for, but for some such as myself it actually gave me a boost of confidence and it gave me a sense of power and okay. it made me kind of just want to go harder because now I'm like, I am, I can't like, not only did I have my first child. Okay. So I did that. Yeah. But I'm like, I turned around and had two babies. Two. <laughs> like I had two kids inside All of right. me. I, I know. Full term C-section, walked out the hospital, Kept it pushing, like, yes. what else can I not do? Like, I literally grew two human beings inside of my yep. body. Like, that is yep. powerful. That's extremely powerful. That's powerful. And I'm like, yep. you know, like I said, I had the one, and I felt, you know, I bounced back. Because I actually, my mindset was so different, too. Because okay. when, I had, when I had my first daughter, okay, my whole mindset was like, I want to bounce back. I want to be sexy. Yep. I want to have my yep. postpartum body. Like I was like, yep. I need to go to the gym five days a week. Yep. I need to be snatched. Like I need to be sexy again. 
And, but then when I had my twins, the sexiness became more of a sense of power and more of a sense of urgency to have something to contribute. Yep. That, something more to contribute other than being so consumed with how my body yeah, the more business. how of how, you know, yeah, how my mind works. <laughs> And that, yeah, was, I mean, that was the sexy part to me. I mean, I think you, you just said a mouthful and you just said like exactly what I mean. And, and, and I don't, I don't know where we get that from. Like, I don't know. We can't say, we can't put it on other people because it's something that we say like, Oh, like you said, I gotta be snatched. I gotta look like this. Um, you know, prior to me having my child, I, I was, I weighed a lot more and my booty was super big. Um, and then after I had my daughter, I lost a lot of weight. Um, I was going through some things, so I wasn't eating like I was supposed to. And I, I became extremely skinny. And it got to the point where I just was like, I was very uncomfortable with myself. I felt like I lost myself. I didn't know who I was when I was looking in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then as time went on, just like you said, I started to realize, you know, you just had a child. This ain't really got nothing to do with your body. You need to work on who you are becoming as a mother. Yeah, and as a woman. As right, as a woman. So, you know, um, your daughter don't care if your if your stomach is not flat or if your booty not big or if you can't fit this. She cares about just how you treat her and how you make her feel. And I think that that right there kind of goes over mother's heads because, you know, I don't want to say that it's being selfish, but I think that we we kind of forget like, yo, we are moms now, so we have a new focus. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know the last time me and you were talking, you was you was kind of like focusing a lot on working out. Like that was kind of like your thing. Where are you That's at with that? And it was, and, and, it, and it actually, it's still my thing. But I I was working out before to become snatched, to become, oh, yes, cocktail. What you drinking? Girl. What you drinking? What are you drinking? OK, so this cocktail is called uh, Beautiful Sunrise. It's a tequila sunrise, honey. The menu, I, mean, I keep saying menu. That's because I'm hungry. The recipe is on the website. I'll send it to you so you can OK, I'm like, what, what, is, what is mine? Girl, <laughs> beautiful. But go ahead, I'm sorry. But no, but I think for me, it was like, Initially, when I had my first child, I was constantly in the gym, constantly working out because I just wanted to like be snatched. I wanted to get my body back. Yeah. I didn't want to gain any weight. I wanted to be sexy. Yeah. But now, like I said, it's more of my it's more of a mindset versus like trying to be so perfect because yeah. it's more or less for me now. I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah. I'll be 35 this year. Okay. So I'm I stopped eating meat and I started eating more fruits and vegetables and keeping my body with way more like I'm almost hundred percent plant based at this point. Okay. And um I'm probably about ninety-five because I sneak a seafood in there once in a while. You sound but, like me, um, girl. <laughs> right. But I'm almost completely plant based, but I'm I'm about to be thirty-five. Okay. I need to focus on my skin. I need to focus on not looking so tired all the time. I yeah. need to focus on being more present, being yes. more able, I'm being being able to um, wake up and be there for my children, be there for my business, be there for myself because we're only getting yeah. older. And I don't yes. want to get to a point where I have high cholesterol, I have diabetes, I'm, you know. I'm I'm 45, having a heart attack, you know, yeah. or, or or I'm tired. I can't uh, tend to my business or tend to my children, you know, tend to my life the way I want yeah. to. So I think now it's become more of a lifestyle change, yeah. more of a necessity. Okay, than wanting to be so perfect and wanting to yeah. be so snatched. Because I at this point I'm like, look, yeah. <laughs> I love. It is what it is. So let's it is what it is because I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I'm okay. Like I, I, I'm, I'm blessed in any, in, 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 in every other way. I, I work very, very hard. Yes. And so if I'm not, if I'm not perfect in my body, 
Um, my bank account is where it needs to be. Yeah. So, okay, so let me ask you this, because you're married. So, mm -hmm. when you say thinking about being perfect and being snatched, would you say that it's that you were, you had that thought process more for yourself or more because you wanted to still be this way that your husband remembered you as before you had your children? Well, the thing is, you can't put that type of expectation on yourself because when him and I, we met, I was 25 years old. Okay, I remember my college, my college was just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, the elastic was just there. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when you get married to someone, you have to understand that it is through thick and thin. You know, you, you, you've said your vows. Yeah. So you know that a person's going to change, right? Yeah, absolutely. And yes, you want to, you know... Like the song Cater to You, you know, keep my body right, keep it, you know, you want to do that in your marriage. Mm -hmm. But don't allow a man to make you feel less than because you're not the same person that you was seeing because he ain't the same person that he was seeing. Exactly. Because I'll be like, let me tell you something. Yeah. Okay. Y'all hear this? I like, had that stomach 10 years ago. Do you hear this? So let's okay. start from here. Okay. <laughs> so let's, let me, let, let's not even go there. So let's okay. be happy. <laughs> So how, does he, how does he feel about you kind of transitioning to the plant based lifestyle? Is this more just like for you? Is this more like a family thing or no? No, it's, it's more of a health thing because okay. um, you know I'm I'm I am breaking generational curses uh, with my family because my yes, okay yes. my dad had a um, my dad has suffered two heart attacks, but he started suffering heart attacks like in his 40s. Okay. And my grandmother also um, has heart disease as well. And then okay. my family suffers with diabetes, high blood pressure. I mean, anything that you can think that a black family would go through, my yes. family goes through that. Okay. And I think the breaking point for me was when my dad told me that he had to have double bypass surgery and he had diabetes Diagnosed diabetes in the same sentence. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. So here I am with my dad signing a DNR and yeah. watching him get whisked off into surgery, not knowing if I'm going to ever see this man again. I'm, I'm becoming his power of attorney. And um, I was like, I'm not putting my kids through this. That was traumatic. That was yeah. trauma. Like, you want to talk about some trauma? That was trauma. And I said, I wouldn't dare put my kids to this. Yeah. I wouldn't no, dare put my kids No, I get because, it. I remember our last so that's why I told myself, I was like, I have to change. I was like, there's no way that I'm, that, like, this is normal that everybody in my family either is popping up with diabetes, got anxiety, cholesterol, high blood pressure. You know, this is not yeah. normal. Yeah, and, and where where are we gonna shift the narrative and change this and become yeah. healthier people? Yeah. Um, so that's what made me change, and I feel good. <laughs> you I, look I, good. Thank you. And I'm like, you I, I, I look young. Yes. I, and, and I'm tired, but yes. you know, yes. So okay, so tell me, how how are you balancing everything? That's what we talked about last week. I mean, because for one. You're an influencer in the beauty world. You know, you do hair. You now have your own establishment. You have three kids. You're a wife. And then you're just yourself. So how are you balancing all of these things right now? It's all, I tell people it's all about time management. Okay. It's not hard. It's, it's, when I tell you, time management is not hard. And I yeah. think people make that their crutch. And, I, and that's my biggest pet peeve, for someone to sit there and look at me in my face and tell me I don't have time. Yeah. yeah. And that's the excuse and i'm like how do you not have time because beyonce has time yeah you know everybody has time so mm -hmm. it's all about time management how do you manage your time how do you manage it yes how do you manage it because i wake up early i i, I change my schedule to where i start my first client at six o'clock in the morning i wake up at four o'clock in the morning every single day Okay. So I'm done here at the salon by two o'clock. Okay. So I'm back home with my kids. Yeah. I, I, my, my, my twins go to bed at seven o'clock. I cannot leave here at seven o'clock. Yeah, absolutely. 
So that's why I literally, I get up a little bit early, mm -hmm. come to work, get off early, do, do a su sufficient amount of clients. Yeah. Um, what's a, what, what's the amount? How many do you do a day? Uh, about 10. You're doing 10 clients a day? About, yeah. Okay, well, I had a question about this. Okay, I had a question. So, since you just said that you do 10, about 10 clients a day, what style do you think that you're known for? Like, what, like what's the style that people just know you for? What service it's, are you known for? Because, like, in my 11-year career, everything has changed. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I, that's why I adapt and I learned how to, and I think that's what sets me apart from a lot of people is because I literally will sit here and learn everything that I can. Okay. I learned how to, and so when you come here, there's no denying you of any service. Okay. I just don't prefer to, I don't prefer to use extensions. I don't prefer to use weed, but if we're in a situation. Yeah, we're going to make it happen. I can, I can do it for you. You know okay. what I'm saying? It's not a problem because I know how. Okay. But I have literally taught myself how to do everything because the industry changes all the time. Women's minds changes all the time. All they, the time. They're never, they're, ne they're very indecisive. I have yeah. clients who have been with me, believe it or not, I have clients who have been with me throughout my whole 11 year career. Okay. Natural, have had a relaxer, have had pixies, had long layers, have had a bob. I like, I literally have gone from blonde hair to black yeah. hair to I have clients who I have literally <laughs> transitioned through so many things. So I don't like to necessarily put myself into In a box. box. Okay. Because that's, that's literally not how my day goes. Like okay. just today I had someone, my client, her hair was down her back. She wanted a nice blowout, nice curls. I had a client who wanted a nice pixie cut, relaxer, pixie cut. I had my client who getting a big, full, natural, tapered look. Um, okay. I have a client that wants to have platinum hair and somebody who wants to have a fade, you know, somebody who wants yeah. to have design. So yeah. it's just, you know, it's whatever. Like, yeah. you know, come on, come make on it happen. It. You know, I'm, I'm all about where the money resides, where the money okay. resides. You know what I mean? Where That's the money resides, where the That's money resides. I'm where the money resides. <laughs> I feel so you. So I'm not here to deny anybody of anything. I'm not here to say, I'm not here to say, uh, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Have a seat. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. that, you, have to, you have to set your mindset to that. You know? Yeah. You can't limit yourself. Because if you start limiting yourself in that way, then you're limiting yourself uh, from a lot of things. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so we're gonna talk about your hair because a lot of people may oh, not know. So the mask. What, what made you become this bombshell that we see everywhere with this super short hair? Like what? Like what started that? What was the motivation behind it? Okay, well, I I've been wearing my pixie cut since I was fifteen. Okay, I did the big chop. I did my first big chop when I was fifteen years old. My hair okay. is really long. <laughs> Wow. And I just, I had just, I just told my mom, I was like, as I was playing sports, I ran track, I played basketball, and I just told my mom, I was like, I just can't. And actually, I was living with my dad, but I had to discuss it with my mom, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I was like, mom, I just can't. Like this, having this long hair is just, it's a lot. It's thick. I was like, I just can't do this. And so she took me to the hairstylist, and we big chopped it up to here. Yeah. And it just wasn't enough for me. <laughs> Yeah. Wasn't enough. I was like, I need more. And so I, I, I went with the pixie cut. And yeah. so I, I rolled with that for a lot of years. But I always wanted to shave it. Um, okay. Because my mom, as everybody knows, is from South Africa. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in, like, you've been to Africa, wearing your hair shaved is not a abnormal thing at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, know, right? Because yeah. it's so hot. <laughs> Especially when you're in South Africa and you're so close to the equator, it's so hot down there that, uh, I mean, wearing your hair shaved, it's like nothing. And, and literally, when my mom came to the United States, she was she had shaved hair. So yeah. I always wanted to, but I was always insecure because I had this bald spot in the back of my head from when I had wingworm when I was um, in kindergarten. 
Some okay. little boy named Demetrius gave it to me, girl. He was hating, girl. He was hating. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. He tried. You know, the hate couldn't break me. Right, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was always insecure about that. So that's why I never wanted to um, just go that low. And so just one day, after I had my first child, um, my pixie, for some reason, was just, like, growing so fast to where, like, it was just, like, all down my face. Like, I yeah. was, like, I could not walk around like this and try to have a newborn. So I literally asked this barber one day. I was, like, can you Cut shut it. this off? Yes. Yeah. I was, like, I cannot, like... I can't, ha I don't, I cannot raise my baby with this hair. And then that's when like the waves and stuff were in the front. I was like, I cannot yeah. walk around like this. Yeah. And so that's when I shaved it. And girl, I didn't know that, you know, I, I was going to become this thing. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I literally was just doing it because. This is what she wanted to do. I just wanted to do. Yeah. It's just so, it's crazy because I think a lot of like, where I'm from, when I first cut my hair, a lot of women weren't wearing their hair this short. It was just like, she got her hair cut that short. And I'm like, yeah, I love it. I used to already, you know, when you used to get your hair curled real tight with the freeze curls, I was already doing that, but I was getting tired of sitting in the salon. So that's what the problem was for me. I was just like, I don't want no hair. So okay. I went to a barber, you know, he started doing the cool designs. I was just like, oh yeah, I love this. But the crazy thing is, I got a lot of, I got a lot of negative looks from women it wasn't the fellas the fellas was just like oh yeah that's nice you look you look really nice with that but it was just like the women were just like oh why would she do that and her hair shouldn't be this short and i and at that time it was just like yo like so hair really does define us i guess i didn't look at it the way other women did so how about like do, do you feel like in the beginning you was kind of getting those looks from women because your hair was so short well the thing about <laughs> girl Hate is my middle name. Like, yeah, I've been hating on me all my life. And, and I, I've gotten to the point now where I just, it doesn't even phase me. And the online bullying was just like crazy. I bet. Um, being called a tranny, how yeah. dare you cut your hair? Yeah. Um, all those, the, those, those men in Atlanta started looking more feminine, you know, by the day. Yeah. And, um, like, just, the online bullying was just a lot, but then it just kind of went from that to bullying about anything about motherhood. Like when I had my C-section with the twins and I had makeup on and they were like, yeah. you're not a real woman. What kind of real woman wears makeup and you're not thinking about your child. And I mean, it was just like, yeah, so I'm like, just, shut up. <laughs> shut, like, it's just like, shut up. You can't Girl, I'm me. used to it. I'm used to it. So it's like now I've gotten to the point where, um, uh, I just like go to hell and I block, block, yeah, yeah, <laughs> block yeah. by, like, yeah, by. yeah. It's crazy. I think I think that when a woman cuts her hair, um, it says a lot about her. It says that she's confident. It says that she's not trying to hide behind uh, certain things. It says that she's just okay with who she is. I mean, um, and sometimes that might intimidate some people, unfortunately. So I think that that's I think that that's what where that may um, stem from. Um, I, I do have another question for you. So was there ever a time during the bullying, um, that you was like, okay, I'm going to put some weave in this. Or you just was like, whatever, this is me. Accept it. Hell no. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I wore weave for a minute when I used to live in Miami. Um, okay. I, lived, I, I moved to Miami when I was 19, between 19 and 23, I lived in Miami. Okay. And I wore the weave only because, like, it was just, you know. Yeah. The thing more caliente. Like, yeah. I just felt like a spicy mommy. Like, I just wanted to, you know, yeah. fit, the, fit the scene. And yeah. it worked. But then I kind of went back and forth, and I was short, and then I wore my weave. But I just liked it because it was just, you know, it was what it was. But has anyone swayed me into wanting to get a weave because of how? Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, me neither, girl. Me neither. We got some questions on here. Hold on, let me see. I can't even see no questions. How do you see questions? I can't, you I can't, can't see, see no the questions? No, I can't see no comments, no questions. I can't. I'm sitting here like, what? I feel like it's just you and I talking. <laughs> no, okay, girl. They, let me just tell you, they going crazy. They like, yeah, that's right. People just be hating. 
Short hair rocks. I, 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 I can't see none of that. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, hey, y'all. Let me see. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. Hold on. I don't know why you can't see it. Okay, let me see. Girl, I can't, I can't see no, I don't see no comments. I'm just literally just. Hold on. Somebody oh, said, you rock short hair flawlessly. Tahira is fire and her story is very inspiring and amazing. I wish Thank nothing you. but greatness for you, queen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, I wish I could see you, but. You know. I know. <laughs> Guys, if you have any questions, I don't know what's going on. Drop them down below so that I can definitely ask her because I don't know why. Um, I don't know why she can't see them. And I do apologize for that, guys. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know why. I think, it's when you're, I think it's when you're like. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, I think it's when you're like on, you know. I don't know. Somebody said they love your style and that you're beautiful. Thank yeah. you. I'm like, oh, I, I'm like, I ain't got nothing on, but <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need it. So, okay. So now that you have your, now that you have your new salon, right? Um, are you going to be in your salon by yourself? Are you, or is there going to be other people in there with you? So like, where are you at now with that? What's your, what's your. So your I just opened up December the 15th. And so I kind of, I was working on it for, um, it was kind of like a like a spur of the moment decision to open it up. Okay. Okay. So I was still like working on it as I was opening, and okay. so I'm finally kind of getting to like a comfortable point and comfortable space. I just didn't want to bring anyone in while I was still working because I just didn't want anybody like in my face. You know what I mean? Yeah. I um, and then I didn't want and because of my brand, I didn't want anybody complaining like, "Oh, I'm going to go work for her and she got no lights and her thing." Yeah. Was, like I. I'm not trying to hear none of that. So I yeah. just wanted to make sure that my space was finished. And so I just installed my barber station. Okay. Um, I have that extra station behind me. I actually have two stations right here up against okay. this wall. So I'm going to okay. leave one station open and I'm going to hire a stylist and a barber. So it'll be like three of us. But um, okay. I'll probably hire the first, um, the first week of March. I think okay. I'll be you know, I just put my TV up, and so I think I'll be ready. You're taking your time. You're taking your time. Uh, yes, girl. I guess because I'm like I just I just want to make sure that it's just nice and set up. You know, for somebody yeah. to come, so I, want them to be, I want them to feel comfortable. You know. Yeah. I got some questions. Okay, so how do you get four C hair to lay with a short natural cut? Um, you can use uh. You always want to train the hair with like a like a do rag. A do rag actually works. Okay. You know, anytime you want to just lay down. But the thing about it is, is that you have to have really really short hair in order for it to lay. I cannot lay my hair like at this point, my yeah. girls. I cannot lay my hair down. Yeah, man, no lay down. People think that people think because like, oh, she has a softer texture. That it's easy. No, my hair. If I did like this, it's gonna go like this. <laughs> yeah. So you have to have short, short hair okay. in order for it to lay down. Other than that, you have to get a relaxer. Now, if you want to wear something for the day or for the evening, um, you can honestly just tie your hair overnight with the do rag, and, okay. and, and you can do that. You got to use a lot of gel, a lot of foam. To okay. Because that. that's something that I have to do here for my clients. But it works. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Um, love your um, love your story. I have a one. I have one year old twins, and I'm contemplating on cutting my locks. So you're motivating some folks around here. Thank you. Uh, Thank where? Uh, what area is your salon in? What part of Georgia? It's in it's in it's in the historical West End of town. Okay. So Black History Month. We're in a black side of town. Okay. We are um, on. Uh, off of Ralph, Ab Ralph David Abernathy okay. and Lee, which is right down the street from Clark Atlanta, Spelman, okay. and Morehouse. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I sound like I'm like, welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> okay. Um, what hair color was your favorite? So if you rock so many colors, what would be your favorite hair color? Red. Red looks yeah. great on me. 
I love, okay. I like having red. And okay. I think at this point, I think at this point, now that I've experimented with these things, like okay. if I ever go back to something, it'll definitely be red. I like red. And okay. I like red. I think, I think it's a little bit too late right now for me to go to red because it's kind of like starting to get, you know, warm outside. So I'll yeah. probably stay black. But towards, you know, Christmas and that time, I'll probably go back to red. I like red. Okay. How do you keep 4C edges down and moisturize? Okay, how do you keep 4C edges down and moisturize hair when your hair gets dry? Um, so the thing is, is like I what dries the hair out is if you're constantly putting water on it. Don't don't use water. Okay. And don't use edge control that's water based. Um okay. try to use something a little bit like Cantu has a really good edge control um, because it's really, really soft. Okay. Um, but it doesn't have like that watery feel to it and it's not too hard. Um, and then Design Essentials has a really, really good edge control as well. Okay. But as far as keeping your hair moisturized and refreshed, try to stay away from using water every day. Try to buy something like a. Um... Hold on, girl. You go to my products. We're going to show y'all some products now. Y'all got a screenshot. Um, so, like, this is something that I use for myself. I keep, this is my personal stash. Okay. But it's called a daily um, curl revitalizer. And so, literally, like, what I do when I come here in the morning, okay. because my hair is, like, dry, and, like, sometimes my curls are kind of flat. Yeah. So, I literally just, like, spray it on. You know, I, I literally just like spray it on every day. And then you can just, and because I'm talking, it got in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but you just kind of like take it and you can just kind of rub it in and kind of fresh, you know, refreshing up your curls a little bit. Now, do you use and a sponge? Just, do you use a sponge or no, you just use your hands? No, because when you have softer, when your hair is a little bit longer or when it's a softer texture, okay. it can make it frizzy. The sponge can make your hair frizzy. Okay. I only a sponge for women who have less than an inch of hair. Okay. Um, but when you have about an inch or longer, I I, I, I just kind of use my fingers. Okay. Or you kind of just you kind of just comb it in, but just okay. kind of use it, use the, the palm of your hand. Okay. Kind of, but don't smash it. But just kind of like just you know just kind of rub it in a little bit, and then you you'll kind of see how your curls just kind of freshen in. Okay. Um, but co-washing. Yes. Don't shampoo your hair. <laughs> you don't need yes. to. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Um, I, I rarely shampoo my hair. I rarely I shampoo my hair. I probably shampoo my hair maybe once a month. Okay. Um, I co-wash. I keep it in my shower. I like the As I Am coconut co-wash. It's okay. very good. Okay. Because sometimes I'll come out the shower with that co-wash and my hair is already curly. Yeah. From that co-wash. Versus, like, when I'm shampooing, it just, my curls are just so dry. Yeah. So like, from, it just feels like it's just, it just was sucked out, you know. So, I yeah, just, I, I feel drip, that way, I too. I don't shampoo my hair like that. Yeah. Um, no, co-washing. Like too. Yeah, yeah, co-washing is a must. Um, and then getting, like, a nice, just, like, a light um, conditioner, like, a leave-in conditioner instead of using, like, a moisturizer. Okay. Um, again. <laughs> Come on, Rick, Rick, we, we want to see these products now. Bring them out. Um, so you can use like this, it's a daily moisturizing lotion. Okay. From, this is, this is what I use in the salon. So I use Design so Essentials on the you, you definitely like Design Essentials. You would definitely suggest yeah. them. This is, when you go to my, my, my stuff over here, that's what I use in the salon. Okay. For okay. all natural. Okay. Um, but a good tip is try to invest in a texture spray. This is one, um, like for an example, this one is from Kenra. Um, always look for something that says texture. Okay. Dry texture spray. So, but this is for this is for someone who has a. Um, a taper cut, a big taper cut. They want that fullness. They yeah. want that big hair. So you would just literally just take it. I, I don't have a comb, but you can take your pick 
and just lift it up, put it into your roots, and it'll literally just like lift the hair and just give it that fullness okay. that you want. I mean, kind of gave a little bit of mine, but it'll yeah. kind of give your hair. Um, it's for it's for textured hair, curly hair, and it's for body and fullness. Okay. And it's supposed to give you that. So always try to invest. But this one is from Kendra, and it's called Dry Texture Spray. But always okay. look for something that's for texture. And that'll, that'll, you just kind of put in there and just put, you know, pick up, take, take it with your pick girl and it's, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so some people don't know what co-washing is. And I know what it is, but since this is your profession, I'll let you break it down. Somebody said, what is co-washing and what are the best products to use? Um, so co-washing is... Basically, it's a cleansing conditioner. Um, it's a way to cleanse your hair and to cleanse your scalp without using the, the shampoo or without using the suds. Because um, sometimes the suds in a shampoo, even though it's sulfate-free, paraben-free, gluten-free, soy-free, dairy free, like, <laughs> y'all, it still, <laughs> it still has the suds in it and it still is, is super clean. It's, it's there to cleanse so much that it okay. almost dries out the hair. Okay. So a co-wash is a conditioner that doesn't suck up, but it's a cleansing conditioner. So it's almost like a, it's almost like a shampoo, but it's a conditioner. Yeah. But it doesn't shut up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but, it, it, but when you, but when you use it, like your curls are just so like clean. Yeah. Shining and bouncing, and it's just so nice. And yeah. so the one that, like I said, the one that I use is from As I Am. Okay. And um, it's the um, coconut co-wash, and okay. I've been using that for four years, and I I love it. Okay. Um, somebody said, can you use this with a twist out uh for a lift with my high top fade? Can I use what? Can you? Is it a product, or are you saying can you use it as a co-wash? Um, I think she may be talking about the product, uh, like when you was pulling your hair out some. But we'll wait. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Um, but if you're gonna use for a high top fade, I would invest more into. Um, let me go back in my bag of tricks now. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so if you're gonna use a, if you're gonna do like a high top fade, I would invest in something like this. Um, this is from Redken. It's called Wax Blast, and so this is what they call a high impact blast. So it's like a, it's not like a hairspray, but it's a, it's a waxy, it's like a waxy consistency that will hold the hair in place. Okay. But it's not so much like a hairspray where a hairspray will kind of dry you out yeah. versus like the wax is more of a coating. So it'll actually um, act as like an anti-humectant, which means that it'll kind of act as like a, a barrier between your hair and the humidity. Okay. Um, so you kind of want to just um, um, stick with something like this, but this one is from Redken. And it's called Wax Blast. And that'll be really good for, um, and I, I kind of use that sometimes too with like my, um, my clients who have um, high texture uh, looks, like if they want something full, something really big, you know, if they want their hair to sit really, really high, sometimes I use it for them. I have a client who likes to have her hair up in a mohawk, like I cut the okay. sides super short, and she likes it to stick, I blow her out, and she likes the mohawk to just stick out straight. So I blast okay. that wax. It just sticks up on her. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I won't hold you too long. I'll ask you two more questions. Um, thank you for giving all those ladies all those products because they're going crazy over here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. They appreciate it. No problem. I'm not, I wish I could see you guys. I but... know. Okay. So that is actually one of the questions. Like, um, young lady said, like, how can somebody contact you? Like, do you offer, like, any mentorships, like, when it comes to hair, or do you offer any, like, one-on-one -on -one services? Do you do Well, that, that's something that I'm going to be looking into for the for this year. Um, okay. But the thing is, like, because of COVID, 
Yeah. Unfortunately, um, we are very restricted, and I'm not allowing. I'm not even allowing. Uh, I'm, I'm allowing only one client at a time to come to okay. the I allow multiple people in here. So, and I have an assistant right now who I am mentoring, but she only comes um, on Saturdays. Okay. Um, as far as virtual assistants, um, I just have to find the time to do that, but I will make okay. time to do that. Um, it's just that at the moment with me just now opening up my salon, okay. that is just not at the top, top of my priority list. Okay. But it was, but I'm, girl, I'm working you know, on it. It's, it's so coming. Okay. okay. <laughs> so this is my last question and I'll let you go because then you got to get home to the babies. So to mothers out there that, you know, they want to be um, mompreneurs or they want to take that journey to get into, um, you know, doing hair, what are some things that you would say that would kind of help motivate them? Or what are some of the first steps that they should take? Because I think a lot of women, they overwhelm themselves. They want to do everything. And you just want to take your time and then you just kind of work through it. So what would you suggest? Well, the thing about it is like you have to understand that nothing is going to happen overnight. So if your business doesn't take off or be successful within the first six to 12 months, then that's okay. Right. Because realistically, you have to give yourself two years. And that's real. Yeah. You know, I mean, unless, unless you're just some high impact influencer that, you know, your your business can just take off as soon as yeah. you toast and say, "Hey guys, I got these T-shirts. Go buy it now." You know. Yeah. But if you're if you're if you're not on that on that scale, you can get to that level. Absolutely. But you just have to be willing to work your way up and allowing yourself to have that type of patience. There you go. Um, and and please understand that when I speak about time management, that is a big important thing. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, you have to be willing to put it into your mind that you're going to make time to do something. You can't wake up every day and say like, oh my God, these kids, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that, and I can't work yeah. my business. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, you can. Because, and, 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 and sis, when I tell you, you're going to be crying you want to be you're gonna yes. have very, very, very tough, tough times, tough yes, days. Absolutely. But you can do it. Yeah. Because when I had those twins and I still had to be an influencer, yeah. I literally put my twins down, put a full face of makeup on and film at like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And take my makeup off and try to get a few hours of sleep and wait for one of my babies to wake up and breastfeed and whatever. But Things are possible. It's a, it's a lot, but it can be done. And you just have yeah. to, um, if you put your, if you, if you, if you elevate your mindset and, and just, and, and, and constantly, um, you know, look at yourself in the mirror and have affirmations every day and speak to yourself and, and, and write these things down. Like you, it, it can, it, it's like I said, every, if Beyonce can, can do it. That's how we think we can do it. You can do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you said a mouthful. I think a lot of times, um, and, you know, everybody does it. I think a lot of times people just kind of go on social media and they see somebody that they admire. They see them, like, right there in that moment. You know, not realizing what all they had to go through, what was all thrown at them, how many, you know. So it's like how you see me now is not necessarily how I started. We all have a journey. We've all yeah. struggled. But it's a part of it. And like you said, it's a mindset thing. And if you believe in yourself, then it will happen. You just have to keep working at it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you go. But do you want to <laughs> tell people how they can how they can find you, follow you? So it's Mrs. Tahira, M-R-S underscore T-A-H-I-R-A-H. And my hair page is M-R-S underscore T-A-H-I-R-A-H two the number two okay please do not send me client inquiries to my personal page because i have so many followers i have so many dms yeah that that literally would never get answered right okay that's why i created my hair page mrs t Hero two because that is literally how you can contact me as far as becoming a client 
because I can focus, like I know if you're contacting me, that's what you're contacting me about. But right. my DM on my personal page, I get It'd be so bananas. many random questions that I just, if, you, if you're asking about being a client, you'll probably never get seen. So right. please, if you ever want to reach out to me about becoming a client, please reach out to me on my hair page. Okay. So you guys heard that if you need to get in touch with her, she has two pages. So you need to be mindful of the ones that you are choosing to communicate with her and what you're communicating about. That way that you won't get overlooked. Um, but I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to um, jump on here with me. You know I love talking to you. Um, people may not notice, but you're an Ohio girl like me. So Yes, I, just, I was just in Ohio last week, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you, it was so you cold got, and dreary. I know. <laughs> I'm so ready to go. I need some sun. You see, I got a few shades lighter since I. You see, I got a few shades lighter when I went there. I didn't, yeah, <laughs> lost all right. the melanin. Honey. As soon as I went yes, to girl. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so guys, I want to say thank you so much for um, jumping in here this week. You know, we're here every Wednesday at six o'clock. Um, Mr. Hero don't know, but I'm gonna bring her back because I just love having a conversation with her. Um, you guys. Oh, I'm first anytime. <laughs> Yes, they love it. So uh, I just want to say thank you again and have a good night and get home safe, honey. Don't, don't that I know that traffic be crazy. Whew. All right, boom. Bye, guys. All right, bye, everybody. See you later. Bye, bye. <laughs>